What's up guys, my name is Liam and today we're going to be talking about Razer officially being the first gaming company to hit 8K wireless on the Razer Viper Mini Signature Edition. With that being said, is this going to be the best mouse for you and do you need to go pick this up since it has 8K? Let's check it out. So finally, after all this time, we actually understand what has taken Razer so long to come out with the Razer Viper Mini Signature Edition. And it's not just the fact that this mouse is made out of magnesium, they're actually claiming that they spent about a year in developing this mouse as far as the wireless tech goes. So I've been playing around with this mouse a lot and testing out quite a bit, and I decided that I wanted to go ahead and share my results with you, how everything's going so far. And just to let you guys know really quick, if you are watching this video in the future, I am actually releasing this video just a couple of days after the first 8K drop. So anything you're seeing here could be subject to change, and hopefully some of the stuff that I did encounter is going to change through time, whether it's going to be through driver updates, system updates, who knows. And just to put out some transparency for you guys, if you don't have any experience with 8K, you're trying to decide, you know, whether or not this is going to be worth the upgrade for you. I did run a poll and I'd like to thank all of you that did participate in the poll. I actually ran on my YouTube and on my Twitter. And I want to report that a vast majority of people are claiming that they cannot tell a difference going from 4K to 8K. And in fact, I've even seen similar results where just just about the same amount of people re are reporting that they can't see a difference from 1K to 4K. So with keeping all of that in mind, let's go over my experiences and how I feel about using this mouse in the games that I play, the game style that I play. And let's go and start out with throwing up my PC specs right here. As you guys can see, I am actually gaming on a Ryzen 5950X. And currently, my settings on this mouse, I am gaming at 1600 DPI. And another very important factor that I'd like to throw in a mention here is I am gaming on the ASUS 360 Hertz gaming monitor. So obviously, the fact faster your system is overall and the lower input latency or overall system latency you have, obviously you're going to be able to notice a difference, you know, going from 1K to 4K or 4K to 8K. And I also am someone who likes to push my system to the limit. I like to tweak all my graphics settings and usually play them on a lower setting. When I am playing competitive games, obviously it's going to be different if I am playing more single player experience type games. But when it comes to games like Apex Legends, Counter-Strike, Valorant, stuff like that, I'm always trying to optimize my system and get it running as smoothly and as quickly as I possibly can. There are still Still some games out there that do not support 4K. For example, I've played Elden Ring quite a bit and you cannot play that game at all whatsoever with 4K enabled. Obviously that game is just a console port, but when I am playing that game, I do always have to switch from 4K to 1K before I start playing it. And then another game that I actually play quite a bit is StarCraft 2. And though I do play StarCraft quite a bit and I do notice a little bit of smoother cursor movement when I am using a 4K mouse, I honestly see no reason or a real benefit or any type of advantage to using 4K when you're playing games like StarCraft. So to answer everybody's questions before we jump into all the results here, I do want to let you know, do I notice a difference from 4K to 8K? And the answer is yes. And the only real way that I can explain the difference to you guys is noticing the jump from 1K to 4K for me was honestly pretty big. And the jump from 4K to 8K you know, it's it's kind of a same similar type of a feeling, but it's definitely much smaller. But I can absolutely say overall, I do feel like the input does feel a little bit smoother. And for me personally, I just have an easier time doing tasks like tracking people as they're moving left and right. You know, if, you, if you're aiming at somebody that's far away and they're going left, right, left, right, and you're going left, right, left, right, and you guys are trying to time each other or whatever, you know, I just find it a little easier to hit my shots. And just to be clear, this is nothing that's like revolutionary or like game changing or anything like that. You know, it just slightly gives you just a little bit more confidence in your gameplay. And overall, the movement of your mouse and the feedback, you know, it just feels a little bit less laggy. So with that being said, you know, those of you that have played on a laggy system or a laggy internet and then have played on not so laggy system or not so laggy internet, you know, obviously playing without the lag is a bit more addicting and it's a bit more desirable. So when it comes to testing out the pulling rate of your mouse, if you want to play around with it, what you can do is you can download the software off of Razer's website. If you go to the page of the 8K Razer Viper and you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you will see a link down there. And I'll go ahead and also put a link down in the description below if you guys would like to download the software and test it out for yourself. All right, and as you can see on these images here, I have the 1K results to the left 
and I have the 4K results to the right. And just a quick disclaimer on this, obviously all these results were taken with the Razer Viper Mini Signature Edition. When looking at these images, you have to take into consideration the fact of human error. How I've got these results is I would repeat this process several times with 1K, 4K, and 8K. I'd analyze all the images, and I would try and take the average result out of all of them. If I had a machine set up or something like that to be able to do this experiment, it would definitely be a lot more accurate with the consistency of the movement and the speed. But just to let you guys know, I did the absolute best here with what I had to work with. And as you can clearly see by the curve here, there's a clear difference from 1K to 4K. And I honestly feel like these images are the best representation to kind of explain on a visual perspective what you're feeling in game and in hand when using the mouse. The fast movements, they just feel a little smoother uh, you feel like you have a little bit more control and there feels like there's a little bit more responsiveness in it. And if we were to zoom in on the 1K polling rate versus the 4K polling rate, as you can see here with the curve, this is kind of what I'm talking to you guys about, you know, the difference that I personally feel on my system, how everything's set up, you know, when it comes to tracking, going left and right, doing flick shots and stuff like that. Ultimately, you just feel like you get a little bit more precise feedback, especially when you're making those micro adjustments, those quick micro adjustments in the mouse. All right, so next up, let's go over to the curve profile on the 4K between the 8K. So on the left here, what you're looking at is you're looking at the 4K and on the right, you're looking at the 8K. Now, if you look at the beginning part of the 8K right here, you'll see that it's a bit brighter than on the 4K. And then if you look really closely on the line as this is going from a stop to a quicker movement, you'll start to see that the cursors kind of do stay closer together as opposed to the 4K. Now, I know that this isn't a world of difference, but the reason I wanna point this out is the fact that I said, you know, when I am going left, right, left, right on people, you know, it just overall just feels a little bit smoother. You feel like you have a little bit more feedback from the mouse. All right, and then over to the next image here, as you can see here on the left, we do have the curve profile of the 4K, and over here on the right, we do have the curve profile of the 8K. And the one thing I'd like you to notice off the bat is if you look down the center of the line on the 8K, see how it's brighter. So as you can clearly see here, the results on the side of the 8K is that you are getting more input, more feedback, and it looks almost more like you're drawing a line as opposed to just kind of skipping along with the 4K. It just feels like you're getting a little less lag, a little less latency, and you just kind of feel the movements of the mouse a bit more precisely and accurately. And then the final image I like to pull up here is on the left, you know, you know, as I was coming to the stop of my flick, on the left we have the 4K, and on the right here we have the 8K. And again, same thing as when you start out, um, as you can see on the 8K side, there's definitely more of an overlap. It's definitely brighter around this area right here and glows more, just showing that you get a little bit more input. And as you can see, if you just look at the top of the cursor and you're pretend that the top point of the cursor was you know, your red dot or anything you're aiming on somebody, Obviously, if you're going to be going back and forth, left and right pretty quickly there, it just gives you more of a responsive feeling. And overall, you just kind of feel like you have a little bit more confidence in the actual feedback of the mouse and exactly where you're trying to place the crosshair. And you guys also have to take into consideration that this movement paired with, you know, the lower input click latency as well, kind of feels less laggy and it feels a little bit more responsive and faster if your system can handle it. But then again, all of this stuff that I'm saying to you only really applies when it's working like it should be. So as soon as I got the update for the 8K, I just jumped in Apex and I just I just grinded the game all night. You know, I was just playing around, messing around with it, and, and off the bat, I didn't have any issues at all. Everything ran smooth. I didn't notice anything. But then the next day came around, and same thing, I went and jumped on, was playing some games, getting warmed up, and I decided to play with some friends, and I opened up Discord. And what I do wanna say is right now, I am currently having an issue with having Discord open and trying to play Apex Legends at the same time. The movement in the game becomes very choppy, so it's not something that I'm able to really pull off right now. However, when I am playing Apex Legends and I don't have Discord open and I feel like it's running smoothly as it should be, I do wanna report that this mouse feels great. And now I'm not sure if this exactly has everything to do with the polling rate as much as it does with the input lag on the mouse. Again, the feeling in hand with my setup, it just feels a bit smoother. And I do want to reiterate, you know, this isn't going to make you like a god tier play or anything like that. It just, you know, overall, it just feels a little bit more responsive, a little bit smoother, a little less laggy. And I would also like to let you guys know that, you know, Though I'm not having any issues in Apex Legends if I'm not using Discord, I was doing some screen recording trying to get some clips for you guys. And as I was doing screen recording on my computer, as you guys know, that takes up some of the resources of your processor and stuff like that. Every once in a while, I would get these little glitches where it would just like 
freeze for a second or feel like a skip a frame or something and it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't happen often it was like you know every couple minutes or so um, but I did notice the screen recording while using the 8k I was getting a little bit of stuttering issues so the next thing that I tested out was aim labs and I'll just show some really quick screen recorded footage on here um, the real reason I wanted to bring up aim labs is because hardware Canucks actually did a video on the razor Viper mini signature edition when it first came out and they did mention how they were having issues with the 4k with stuttering moving left to right and even switching over to the 8k I'm not having any type of stuttering issues or anything as well and then the next game I like to talk about that I did some testing out on was was CSGO. CSGO has been around forever, obviously. It's an extremely optimized game. This game played a smooth as butter for me as well. I had absolutely no issues at all on CSGO with the AK. I dropped into some team death matches and I was just messing around, just trying to move the mouse around as fast as I can. And I can report I played a few games. I didn't notice any issues at all whatsoever in Counter-Strike. Overwatch 2 is another game that I tried out and I've never had any issues with Overwatch. This game has always ran exceptionally well for me and I didn't come across any issues at all whatsoever. All right, and the final game I'd like to talk about is gonna be Valorant. Now, immediately when I dropped into Valorant, I didn't notice any issues. I wanted to test out Valorant in Team Deathmatch just so I can kind of mess around and play around with it. And what I did notice with Valorant is it played very smooth for me. I didn't notice any issues at first. You know, if I was ever getting shot in the back and I tried to do like a 180 flick or anything like that, from time to time, I would see stutters. And in all honesty, most of the time, I wouldn't have issues. Again, it would be pretty comparable to Apex Legends. You know, when I I was playing without any issues and I was doing a screen recording just every once in a while I'd get a glitch and then oddly enough even though the gameplay was pretty overall smooth in Valorant I decided to drop into the shooting range and this is where I really started to see massive issues with the 8k for whatever reason for me when I drop in the shooting range honestly the 8k is just completely unplayable for me. I was kind of confused by this because I decided to go back and play a couple more matches of Team Deathmatch and I just going back and forth and still it was still the same experience, you know, everything was playing mostly smooth for me in the TDM, but when I was every time I'd go back to the shooting range is where I was having these issues. I do want to let you guys know that even though I have not been able to personally verify it or put it through a test myself, I have seen people online claiming that they're noticing these issues only with the AMD CPUs, and once they switched over to an Intel CPU, they have not had any issues. Again, that's not something personally that I can verify, but it's definitely something that I would like to look into furthermore in the future. Another workaround that I tried playing around with when it comes to these issues that I've been kind of having with the 8K is one of the things that I did is I did go into my BIOS and I did disable C states. I have seen quite a bit of people recommending to do this online. So if you do have an 8K mouse and these are issues that you're having, maybe something you could play around with as well. And then another workaround I tried playing around with is I'm always testing all these other gaming mice and I always have all this stuff plugged in my ports. And I want to say thank you to Yuri. You might know him best as House Gaming. He has a great channel with awesome content and he informed me that you want to plug the mouse into its own USB host controller. So by removing all the ports in the back of my PC and just plugging in the mouse into its own USB host controller, I did find out with Valorant, it definitely was a huge noticeable difference. It made a lot smoother. You know, I still was having the issues. It's still kind of glitching around here and there for me. However, it was definitely a big noticeable difference. I could spam the mouse back and forth left and right quickly, and it wasn't just skipping or stopping. And it definitely overall felt a lot smoother. So I'd say that this is personally something that has worked out for me. All right, guys. And that's really all that I have to say about my first initial reaction on the Razer Viper Mini Signature Edition in 8K. I just wanted to kind of drop to you guys my test results, what I've come up with, how things feel for me, how they work out with me. As I stated in the beginning of this video, most people can't tell a difference. So it's really hard for me to say, you know, if this is something I can recommend for you. You know, in my honest opinion, do I think this is a game changing mouse and do I like it? You know, I would say yes, absolutely. I love this mouse. I always like when people push the envelope with tech. Even though I love what Razer has done here and I love how they're trying to push the envelope, again, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to make you an aim god or it's going to make you much better. Coming from somebody that can feel a difference with my system, my setup, how I play things, do I like it? Yeah, I like it a lot. It actually is really addicting. It's like I said, who likes to play on a system that's laggier or slower when you can play on one that's quicker and more responsive? There's always going to be varying factors when it comes to your gameplay. And at the end of the day, ultimately, you know, I think that you should just stick with what works best for you, what shape you prefer in a mouse, how the overall weight of it, just the feel of it in your hand. I absolutely think that that still is going to be the number one, the most important thing. And though it's not running perfectly for me, it's not flawless, you know, I still have a lot of testing to do. Currently playing at 1600 DPI. I didn't really have time to, to do all these tests 
again with a higher DPI. I am going to try and go up to 3200 DPI. Supposedly the higher your DPI is when you start getting the best results out of the actual 8K polling rate. So perhaps if I find out any better information that I left out here, again, this was just a first reaction, initial impression. You know, I did the best testing I could as quickly as I can to try and get this video out to you guys. But if I do come across anything else that's game changing or new or unique, you know that I'll definitely update you guys and let you know. As things sit right now, I definitely feel like I'm probably going to just stick to my 4K mice when it comes to playing seriously or competitive gameplay. I'm definitely going to be using the 8K as much as I can and testing out in every opportunity that I get. But overall, obviously, there's some little kinks that we need to get worked out. So I hope this video has helped you guys out and has answered any type of questions that you're having. If you do feel like there's anything that I left out, please let me know down in the comments below. And if you're interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you guys next time.